HoYoverse has given some content creators early access to Natlan and the new characters. I'm not one of those creators, but thanks to their videos, I was able to do some theory crafting on these characters. And in today's video, I'll be giving my pre-release TC analysis on Kachina, whom we will be able to get a copy of for free. Now keep in mind this is pre-release, so there may be things with Kachina discovered after her release that were not mentioned in this video. Let's get started. So Kachina is a Geo sub DPS unit. Her damage is pretty low, and off-field Geo application is far from the most useful thing ever. But what's going to make her kit special is that she is currently the only character that can make full use out of the scroll of the Hero of Cinder City set. This is the new support set coming in patch 5.0, which will provide 12% damage bonus to all party members, correlating to the elements that were involved in a reaction that the wielder triggered. And with the 4 piece, the set will provide an additional 28% damage bonus if the wielder was in a Night Soul Blessing state. And since Kachina is from Natlan, she will be getting that full 40%. Essentially, Kachina can use this set as a much better version of Archaic Petra, with a larger team-wide buff, twice the duration of Petra, and actually buff Geo damage with this set as well. This makes Kachina a pretty solid unit with, for buffing, so long as the team does have a crystallizable element. One more important thing to note with Kachina is that her skill is considered a Geo Construct, so she actually has excellent synergy with Chiori, allowing Chiori to get both her dolls, while also receiving the 40% damage bonus from Kachina, thus Chiori will do fantastic sub-DPS damage when used alongside Kachina. That takes us into the teams I'm going to be recommending for Kachina. First is going to be a double Geo team with another new character coming in 5.0, Moalani. The full team is Mualani, Kachina, Chiori, and Xinyan. I went over this team in my Mualani video as well, so check out that video for more information, but this team uses Chiori to deal great sub-DPS damage alongside Mualani, since the two of them will both be buffed by Kachina. The extra shield strength granted from Geo Resonance will also help to keep Xinyan's shield active, which is important since that is where her pyro application comes from. Mona can be used here instead of Chiori to have the team focused entirely on Mualani's own personal damage, but you will lose out on Geo Resonance, so you will need to be careful to keep Xinyan's shield alive. And either variant of this team looks like it may be one of Mualani's best teams for now. Another really strong team that Kachina works very well in is going to be a Nuvalet, Farina team. So Nuvalet, Farina, Kazuha, and Kachina. Since the buff Kachina provides with the scroll set lasts for 20 seconds, Kachina can buff both Nuvalet and Farina with it over an entire rotation. The Kachina will be procking Crystallize, which while not nearly as good as having actual shielding, can still help prevent you from getting interrupted by an attack or two. The damage and DPS of this team is very similar to using someone else like Charlotte or Zhongli, so Kachina is indeed a fantastic choice here. And Kachina is also great as the second Geo unit in a Navia team. Compared to the other options, she's a decent bit ahead of Zhongli, although without this shield, and she's also about equivalent to a C0 Chiori, though if Chiori has either her weapon or any of her constellations at all, then Chiori will be a lot better than Kachina here. But otherwise, Kachina is tied for being the strongest second Geo for Navia's team. And the next team I have is Linny, with Linny, Bennett, Kachina, and either Chiori or Zhongling. Both Chiori and Zhongling will result in about the same DPS. This is one of Linny's stronger non-vaporized teams, although double Geo with Zhongli and Chiori is actually higher DPS due to having a shorter rotation. But this Kachina variant is still strong, and gives Lenny another good option that he can use. Then the last team that I have for Kachina is a Noel team, with Noel, Farina, Chiori, and Kachina. Noel would normally use Goro in a team like this, but Kachina is better because while she buffs Noel's damage by less than Goro, she's better at buffing Farina and Chiori, while also giving Chiori a second doll, 
So Cherry's damage is just going to be way higher here, resulting in this being Noel's new strongest team. And those are all the teams that I currently recommend Kachina in. I did look into other teams, but the teams I showed here are the only ones where Kachina was either a close side grade or an upgrade. But one unit you might be wondering why I haven't mentioned is Ito. The thing with Ito is, for Kachina to buff him, there would need to be a Pyro, Hydro, Electro, or Cryo unit on the team for Crystallize. And Ito's best team is 4 Geo units, so he would have to replace half his team for Kachina to work. And none of the units of a Crystallizable element that you can use with Ito would provide enough value for it to be worth changing half of his team. So until we do get a good Pyro, Hydro, Electro, or Cryo unit that Ito can use, I do not recommend trying to use Kachina with him. But now, moving on from the teams, let's go over how you build Kachina. As far as artifacts go, it's very simple. The only set you'll ever be using on Kachina is the scroll set, since buffing with this set is where basically all of our value on a team comes from. But if you did just want to maximize Kachina's personal damage for fun, then you would want to use the 4-piece Husk of Opulent Dreams. And for her main stats, use the Fence Sands, as that's where her damage scales with then Geo Goblet, and a Crit Circlet. And for the substats, just focus on Crit and Defense. You really don't need to worry about Energy Recharge, as Kachina's Burst doesn't do anything worth using it every rotation. With Kachina's substats though, just keep in mind, she does deal low damage, and getting really good substats on her is going to make a very small impact to your team overall, so you don't need to stress over her stats too much. Then Kachina's weapons are also extremely simple, as there are only two weapons you should ever be using on her. Most of the time, I would say they just use Favonius Lance. Kachina doesn't need the energy, and she does lose a lot of damage with it, but again, her damage is very low anyway, so that really doesn't mean much. It's usually just going to be better to have Favonius to lower the rest of the team's energy requirements. But, if your team doesn't need help with energy, then you can just use the new Craftable Polearm, Foot of the Rainbow Trail. This weapon is basically a stat stick of 84% defense, and Kachina's multiplier scale entirely with defense, so this is actually the best weapon for her damage, even compared to 5-star weapons. An R5 deathmatch in single target is technically slightly ahead, but that's only in single target, so really, just use either Rainbow Trail or Favonius Lance on Kachina, there's just no reason to ever use anything else. And for Kachina's constellations, there's not much to go over here, as the only important one is her constellation 2. This not only extends the duration of her skill, but also makes it so that Kachina's burst will put her into the Night Cell Blessing state and summon her skill. This can be pretty important for some teams, as Kachina's skill has a 20 second cooldown, and a lot of the teams that you would be using her in have rotations shorter than 20 seconds. But with Kachina C2, you can just use her skill on one rotation, and then in the following rotation, she can use her burst instead. And then her C6 does give some extra damage, but it only procs at most every 5 seconds, so it doesn't actually add much more damage at all. It will mainly just be okay if you need some extra geo application for more crystallized and Anavia team. So if you do plan on using Kachina in your teams, I would advise trying to get her to Constellation 2. Once you do have her at Constellation 2, you can pretty much just forget that she even has other constellations beyond that. Now, I want to give my overall thoughts on Kachina and her place in the meta. I actually think Kachina is balanced perfectly for what she is. She is a free unit that is very easy to use and build, only needing to be seed 2 at most to be fully functional, and having her best weapons be either Favonius or a Craftable, so it makes sense for her to be not some crazy upgrade for teams. The only team that she is a true upgrade for is Noelle, but she is still a very competitive side grade and only slight downgrade for some other teams. The teams where she is useful in are very strong and competent teams such as Nuvalet, Muralani, and Navia, so being a competent and accessible option for these strong teams puts Kachina in a very good spot for the meta, in my opinion. And that's all I've got. 
you liked today's video, please be sure to give a like and subscribe and comment your thoughts down below. Thanks and goodbye.